Today's video is sponsored by ScottyVest, the brand known for innovative and bold designs keeping your devices safe and secure so that you can focus on the more important things in life. Now today I'm wearing the Nomadic hoodie which is made out of a very soft, lightweight yet warm micro fleece and it has a very bold design which I thought was perfect for me. I'm kind of a bold guy so I like a bold design. But it has 13 pockets including hand warmers, elastic water bottle holders, expandable key holders, magnetic chest pockets, change pockets, smartphone pockets, and every everything you could possibly need to keep all of your devices easily accessible with an active on-the-go lifestyle. Now, if you head on over to Scotty Vest, that's S-C-O-T-T-E-V-E-S-T.com slash J-A-Y, or just click the link down in the description. Honestly, it's a lot easier. You can save 20% off by using coupon code J at checkout. Make sure you guys use that code. You can save 20% and it lets them know that I sent you. Now the other day at Fry's Electronics, I picked these up and I don't remember exactly what I paid. I wanna say that the wireless AC 1200 was about 30 or 35 bucks. Uh, and then the TP-Link power line adapter, I wanna say was about $79. But this has the three port gigabit pass through on it. So it's basically like a switch as well. Now the question when it comes to installing power line adapters is where in the house does it need to be plugged in? Now personally, I feel that Power line adapter should be plugged in as close to where you want to get the internet as possible so it doesn't have to travel so far through the power system. The way that these work is they turn an outlet into an extension of your network. So these will communicate with each other through the power outlets and you have one that has a source and one that becomes a feed. So the source gets plugged into an ethernet or your router uh, or a switch or whatever it's, you know, your source of internet's gonna be. And then one of these will be outputting to, in my case, the uh, test bench that I have behind me. Now, one of the reasons why I never really had good success with these in the past was the quality of wire inside of your home is what really is gonna determine how well these things work. Now, it does say up to 1200 uh, you know, Mbps, but the thing is there's a lot of factors that can really differentiate how much speed you're gonna get. How much noise is there inside the line? How much interference is there? Um, are there you know, is it near microwaves? I mean, there's a lot of things that can actually cause interference that really slows that down and can give you lots of intermittent, you know, in and out uh, when it comes to, you know, the actual quality of the signal being sent to the power line. Now the same thing can actually be said for the wireless. You know, how far is the wireless have to go? What's in between it? Are there a lot of walls? Is there a lot of electro uh, interference? How many wireless are in your area? We already covered that in a different video. So there's a lot of plus and minus to both of these systems when it comes to getting internet in a place where you don't already have it. The cool thing about the Powerline starter kit, so is they come with everything that you need. At least in this case here, it comes with the two Powerline adapters as well as uh, two ethernet cables so that you have one for either end. Um, it's advertised that it's really good uh, for you know 4K UHD streaming. That's obviously gonna depend on your service provider. That has a, a huge bearing on 4K streaming. Uh, but it says it uses the latest AV2 standard, which they call future-proof your network. Obviously, there's no such thing as truly future-proofing, but I went with this one because it has pretty much everything I wanted. It's got the extra outlet on it. It's got a built-in three port uh, gigabit switch inside each one, which is gonna kind of solve two uh, you know, issues that I had. I didn't want to use up a plug, so this is gonna give me pa plug pass-through, and it's gonna give me a switch in another room that I actually wanted to be able to hook up more than one ethernet in there. Now I decided that I'm gonna go ahead and plug the source into the baby's room, which is actually right above here uh, and, and over just a little bit. So there's only one wall between. And I think that that's gonna give me the shortest route between the plugs where I'm not gonna have anything really happening in between. Um, again, I wouldn't want to plug this in on the other end of the house where the ethernet and the switch is simply because there's a lot, the entire house between there and here when it comes for there to be interference and noise in the line. And because this house is already pre-wired for ethernet, I'm fortunate to where I can do that. But if you have a home that does not have pre-wired ethernet, then you're really gonna have to think about, uh, you know, the best place to install this and might try different plugs in your home by running, a, you know, an ethernet cable to it and seeing if you get any better performance. But anyway, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and load up the power line adapter. We're gonna get this thing online and then we are going to load up the wireless and compare the two and see which gave us the best results. Transition. So the installation was stupidly easy. It was literally plug and play. Plug it into power on one end, plug that end into ethernet, plug in the other side over here into where you want internet, and then plug that into the device, in this case, my test bench. 
So I've got a 60 by four internet connection. So that's the baseline here that we're gonna see if I'm getting that whole internet connection. So let's go ahead and see. So my ping was uh, 16, but as you can see, it kind of stuttered there on the start, but then it got us our entire, as you can see right there, I'm getting 65 megabit down. Uh, so I'm getting a little bit of bonus there from uh, my ISP. Now my upload is four, so let's see if I'm getting my full four. Uh, yeah, pretty much sitting like 3.9, there's four. So we're getting it. Yeah, so, so far I'd say the power line adapter in this house is working pretty damn good, but I think that might have something to do with where I placed it. It's as close to this room as I could get it. Well, the other thing to do now is to try out the wireless. So just to recap, this is the D-Link I picked up, the AC1200. Um, it does advertise that it's a 300 megabit plus 867 megabit. So it's giving us our dual band 2.4 and five gigahertz wireless. So we're gonna go ahead and install this now and see if it's giving us max speed. And if it does, then I guess we've got some discussion here, don't we? Well, the wireless adapter is installed. That took all of 45 seconds because it's so easy on a test bench. Let's load up the drivers and see what we get. I think I'm going to get full internet connection here, but uh, you know, got to, got to complete the test. All right, we're on the wireless now, the wireless five gigahertz. I'm only getting uh, three out of five bars on the wireless here, which is kind of interesting considering I've got that router placed where I thought was pretty ideal. But let's go ahead and see how the speed goes. Selecting best server, again, based on ping. Ping here is 16, but look at the speed though. You can see the wireless is sitting right around 15, 16, 17 on the five gigahertz band. We're down to two bars of five though. But part of the issue here, I think quite honestly, as I've already shown in my other video, is there are a ton of wireless networks here. So you can see we're only getting a quarter of the speed that we were getting with the power line adapter and the ping is the same. The upload will probably be fine. We'll probably get the full four, um, barely, 3.7, 3.8, there's our four. Wow, okay, so let me jump on the 2.4 gigahertz and see what happens. So rather than bore you guys here, I just went ahead and jumped forward. You can see we got 30.69 down and we're getting the full four up on the 2.4. Well, I guess those results kind of speak for themselves, don't they? Well, guys, I think those results kind of speak for themselves. Clearly, I was wrong when I said that I thought that the wireless here would be the better solution. Clearly, with this shop being uh, on the first floor and a lot of house above it and the wireless still having quite a few walls to go through, five gigahertz couldn't deliver and 2.4 gigahertz only gave me half what my actual uh, bandwidth is capable of here with my ISP. So clearly in this case, power line worked perfectly. It didn't give me any additional ping um, than my other system is. 16 ping seems to be kind of normal. Sometimes I'm under 10, uh, but then again, you know, uh, it is what it is. I I'm doing the best I can with what I've got. Uh, but I got the full 60, in fact, 65 by four when it came to the power line adapter. Now the quality of power line, power line adapter is going to matter. If you get a cheap, power line adapter, you are going to get cheap results. And there's a lot of articles out there that talk about power line adapters, the top 10 best ones that you can get. Um, but I think what the biggest factor here is going to be when it comes to power line adapters is not um, how fast your internet is, it's gonna be the quality of the wiring in your home. And one of the reasons why I had a terrible result with power line adapters in the past was as I mentioned, the other house I lived in where I tried using it five years ago was built in 1963, over 50 years old, 53 years old. And the wiring in that house is original. So that says a lot about it. And obviously being in a much newer home built in 2004, the wiring matters. So if you're in a really old home with poorly insulated uh, power lines and you are gonna have a lot of things hooked up to it, a lot in between it too, where you put it in your home does matter as well. If you've got a lot of interference between the two boxes, that can be a problem as well. Things like turning on microwaves can create big issues. Um, but it's working perfectly for me. So it's definitely something worth checking out if you think that the wiring in your home can support it and you just don't have any other choice. I don't like being tethered down to a wire, but then again, it's a test bench. It's not gonna be moving around a whole lot. So it worked perfectly for me. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching today's video. You guys requested it. I went ahead and did it. And uh, 
I'm glad I listened because I'd be sitting out here with wireless going, oh, I wish I had a better internet connection. When all along you guys would be like, well, Jay, if you weren't being such a dickhole and you actually listened to what we were telling you, you would have better internet connection. Well, I did, and I've got a really good connection here out here in the shop. So thanks for suggesting it, guys. I'm glad I did it. Let me know what you guys thought of today's video. And as always, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video. And don't forget, scottyvest.com slash Jay. I love this hoodie. This hoodie is freaking amazing. All right, guys, see you in the next one.